I think Ronnie knew what he was doing. He built a fucking monster physique that made it as a pro, as a natural bodybuilder. He was a natural bodybuilder and he was a pro. And then in 1998, 99, he was in such sick shape in 2000 and he didn't have that bloated gut. And he didn't, have, he looked, he was a specimen. I want to ask you about another legend of bodybuilding, Ronnie Coleman. Um, you know him personally, know obviously. Him you know, arguably he had the best physique of all time. That's what people say, call him, you know, the king of bodybuilding. Now, recently he's been going through a lot of surgeries. You see him a lot on uh, either in a wheelchair right. or crutches. You know, he has, I think he's still going through a lot of difficulties walking. And I think it's an ongoing issue because of his spine, spinal damage that he, that he had, um, you know, over the years kind of like built up in his spine basically. So he has a lot of surgery he had to do. Uh, but he's still working out and he still kind of always keeps it positive. What is your general take on Ronnie Coleman right now, observing him, what he used to be like, what he is right now, and sort of like summarizing his legacy in general? What is your take on him? Ronnie Coleman, first of all, has a f incredible soul. He's a good man. There's not, they're really, you know, uh, he has such a good spirit inside. He's just a generally a good guy. If, you, if he was walking outside here, and some kid came running up to me, hey, you Ronnie Coleman, Ronnie, can I get my picture taken with you? He wouldn't be like, hey, get the f out. He's not Lou Ferrigno. He would fucking do it. You know what I'm saying? You like the way I threw that in there. Lou Ferrigno asked for money and then... Yeah, Lou Ferrigno would ask for money. And then if the camera didn't work, he'd say, well, he had your shot, give me, give me another $20. But, um, you know, Ronnie Coleman has a great spirit and a great soul. And he's a very, very dedicated man. I hear guys say to me, oh, you know what it is? Because he tried to get so big and he kept, he took so much I don't know about that. That I, I don't know about. I, you know, I think he pounded his body so hard with such heavy weights. He, I don't know if he really needed that kind of weight to be the Ronnie Coleman he was. There's people who, who, who would debate that. Oh, heavy weights build big muscles. That, that they really... It's not necessarily true. Making the muscle do the work is what build big muscles. Because you could take a 200 pound power lifter and compare him with a 200 pound bodybuilder and there's no comparison who has more muscles. Dexter Jackson made the same point. I was training smarter with machines now as opposed to like free weights. I love Dexter Jackson. He thinks I don't like him. He once said to me, you always, I, Dexter, you know I like you. Stop, okay? Uh, I, and I think Dexter Jackson's great and I hope he keeps going. Don't quit. Um, but Ronnie Coleman, if he might have trained smarter, he might have been able to keep going. You know what I'm saying? There's too many people. You know, you got Chad Nichols talking about this one. You know, you got these momos that they're momos. These the, gurus. the gurus. Oh, God. They're the worst thing. Listen to me. Even you yourself. I know for a fact, I'm, I can guarantee you, you can tell me uh, if I eat Chinese food tomorrow, I'm bloated, bro. Right? Am I right or wrong? You know certain foods that affect you. Or if I, dude, if I eat any of that ice cream, I'm gonna want to my brains out later. Or whatever. You know what foods affect you. You don't think that these guys, they're scientists. When you see these, and even a Kuwait guy sitting there and they're going, you know, you know, I trained. Thank you, Chris Osito. You know, like, 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 what are you fucking mindless? You don't know what fucking work. You know what I mean? Like, I understand an objective eye. Okay, you know what I'm saying, Vlad. Listen, you know, your calves look good. We got to work on, you know, and you need a little more out of quad sweep or something. But to stand there, take this, take that, take this, don't eat, wait, you picked your nose and ate it? Oh, f bro, you know, go puke that out. I'm just saying, I think that the gurus f up Ronnie. You know what I mean? Listening to too many of those guys, I think Ronnie knew what he was doing. He built a fucking monster physique that made it as a pro, as a natural bodybuilder. He was a natural bodybuilder and he was a pro. And then in 1998, 99, he was in such sick shape in 2000 and he didn't have that bloated gut and he didn't, have, he looked, he was a specimen, okay? Don't keep trying to do too much. It's like when Rich Gasparri tried to out muscle, you know, three years in a row, you play second in the Olympia, like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna try to put on 15 pounds more muscle I'm going after he needed. No, you know what happens and you drop now. Now all of a sudden the waist is thicker. Same thing happened with, Le with, with Labrada. Labrada came back, he sees this new phenom coming in. His name's Lee Haney, you know? Oh, sh won the night of champions. 
I'm going to have to beat this guy. He's big. He's built. Okay, you know, I'm going to put on some weight. Instead of taking those slick, sleek lines that he had. You understand? If you try to make Lila Brada a mass monster, it's not going to work. What I think is Ronnie had a gorgeous physique. He had a beautiful, beautiful body. Beautiful structure. Uh, between him and Lee Haney is the greatest bodybuilder that ever lived. You can ar make arguments for both of them. Okay? So, he, I well, think... Well, well, no. Well, Ronnie, actually, if you want to have the debate, I mean... Don't you think Ronnie had the competition level was extremely different from when Lee Haney used to compete? Can you make that point? No, you know you Ken heard that before. See, it's hard to take the guys out of the era. Yes, Ronnie like did have different. Was, was crazy. Was crazy. Ronnie's competition was crazy, but in a certain way. Yeah. Wait a minute now, check this out. I'm going to debate you on that. Chris Cormier, uh, Jay, Cutler. Jay Cutler, guys like that. Lavroni, Le but Lavroni, I put almost even. Yeah, yeah, Lavroni, but Lavroni's kind Chris of in it. Was more in the it was more in yeah, but those guys came at the end at the more Ronnie came, they they ended in the early two thousand Ronnie reign came after them they were more the Dorian Yates nemesis you know what I'm saying, but now wait a minute hear me out. You're going to talk about who did Lee Haney beat? Greatest physiques on the planet, uh, Sean Ray, okay Lee Haney beat you know Vince Taylor. Uh, Lee Haney beat some of the most beautiful physiques, Bob Paris, uh, Barry DeMay, uh, Lee Labrada. Do you understand what I'm saying? Those physiques, Mike Christian, uh, Gary Stridham, I can go on, you know, Mike Quinn. Those guys had incredible physiques. Think about that. I mean, Labrada's physique uh, uh, today, you know, his lines are so much better. These guys that, run, I mean, Jay Cutler was a, uh, listen, Jay, please, I, I love you. Sometimes I use Jay Cutler as a, because my boss used to, you know, Steve Blackman always would say, uh, you know, Jay, Jay, Jay. So I use like, you know, Jay Cutler as a, an example for certain things. But Jay Cutler was blocky. I mean, his, comp compare him. I mean, we don't, we can't take guys out of the era. I, Jay was a great bodybuilder. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is the guys that Lee Haney had to go against had such Physiques, there was signature. You can cut off everybody's head. If you cut everybody's head off and you just showed the body, up, Mike Christian, up, you know, Barry DeMay, up, that's Bob Paris. Look at that physique. Oh, Sean Ray in his prime, looking incredible. You know what I mean? If this world were my, you know, and he would pose to all that, you know, and he moved graceful and all those guys. You, those guys, name guys in the 2000s. Now, check it out. You can cut the heads off those guys. You can cut off Labrada's head, and you go, oh my God, that's Lee Labrada. Oh my God, that's, that's, that's Sean Ray. I mean, give me people in the 90s that were like that. I mean, I'm not sorry, 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 not the 90s. No, give me people, right, but we're talking about at the end of Sean Ray. You know, Ronnie Coleman's reign, when he was going against Cutler and all that, you know what I mean? Col uh, Sean Ray was pretty much out of it already. You know, the battles between those guys. You, you follow what I'm saying? Who would, if we look at the top guys, their physiques, like, um, uh, I'm trying to think who the, f who the f was against. I'm just, listen, I think Lee Haney is, is actually one of my, probably my favorite bodybuilder, like right. if you have to pick one, but if you're gonna take the best, if you're gonna, if you're gonna talk about the best of all time, you gotta go with Ronnie, I mean. It depends, you have I, to. I, I love Ronnie. You would, say, you would, I, you would pick I him over Ronnie? Ronnie is, I'm saying, who would you pick, if, if just, just give me the best of all time, who would you say? His bodybuilder of all time's gotta be Ronnie Coleman. I think Lee Haney's right there with him. But, I think so too. But the greatest genetic structure of all time, no doubt, and I'm not the only one who says this, Arnold Schwarzenegger says it all the time, is Sergio Oliva, without a doubt. Sergio really? Oliva, think no, about I've never this. heard of that before. Think about this. Sergio Oliva in, in 1960s had 22, 23 inch arms. His arms were the same size as these guys today, had the same structure, the same mass, like a big Rammy type mass. He had shoulder width that was wide. He, they said his waist was 28 inches. 20, you ever see the picture of Sergio Oliva? Thighs bulbed out, hamstrings, humongous calves, giant forearms, delts. He had every body part going. His structure, can you imagine him with today's drugs? I mean, he did that with deep ball test and DECA. You know what I'm saying? Think about that. I heard that Flex Wheeler considered to be the best genetics of all time. I have to give Flex Wheeler... Uh, a I'm nod thinking. there. He, I think he, it depends on how you look at it though. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think Flex Wheeler's up there for the best genetics of all time, without a doubt. Mm -hmm. But mass, 
I mean, in mass per square inch. I mean, it, I mean, he was so dominant, like so powerful. Even Arnold said it was. It was just. I mean, it's hard to take a guy out of his era. You know what I mean? I it is. It is difficult to compare eras for because sure. those guys competed with different guys, different time, different judging standards, and different drugs. You know what I mean? The whole different. Everything changes. You know. Everything. So, when, I mean, last question about Ronnie Coleman. When you see him today um, at the expo or an appearance that he right. does, do you, how do you, do you feel sorry for him? Do you feel, how do you feel right now? Okay, yeah. See, when I see Ronnie today, we kind of get, I kind of go on, I kind of get off on a tangent here because that's what the original thing was about Ronnie. Um, I, I do believe that, I think that listening to Guru's kind of come up, you know what I mean? So you feel a sorry little, for him? I, I feel sorry for him, but I don't in another way hmm. because, um, I feel sorry for him, but he's such a good spirit. He smiles. If he sees you, he'll come. Like, he, like I see him, his eyes get all big, and he's, he's, he smiles from ear to ear. I like that. I like that in him. I, I, I feel sorry that that has to happen to him, but I don't think it's affected him. I think he's so strong. He doesn't give I think in his mind, he say, you know what? When I'm done with this shit, I'll get back compete again yeah, I think yeah. others are more affected by it like people around him and like people, people fans the fans you know what I'm saying right. the fans when they see I think people around him are more affected it's by a it. Shocking thing to see, you know? it is a shocking yeah, thing yeah, especially because he was such a mountain of a man yeah, and yeah. now you're seeing him and he's mortal he was he's mortal but I, I feel bad that that happened to him but he's such a good guy and he's such a happy guy you know what I mean? And he sees you and he, he doesn't treat people like sh He has time for everybody. I, I, I mean, to me, Ronnie Coleman is up there on fucking Mount whatever, you know, what do they call that fucking, with the, you know, with the Rushmore. Mount Rushmore of bodybuilders. He's there, man. He's, he's, he's an amazing man. And his heart is good. I don't think he's a bad guy. I never heard anybody give me a So who are the four that will go on Mount Rushmore bodybuilding? Wow. You got me with that one. Okay, let's see. So definitely Ronnie one, right? You got to put Ronnie up there. Um, you, you got to put Arnold. Lee Haney, Arnold. That's three already. Right. Lee Haney, Arnold. So who's the fourth? Wow. Uh, who is the four? You might have to put Dorian Yates there. So Dorian Yates, Arnold, Ronnie, and Lee Haney. Why? Because. Game changers. All kind of changed. Every something. one of them changed the game. Exactly why. Haney ushered in a physique that nobody had. I talked to Sean Ray about that. I said, Sean, you competed against all those guys. And he said, I, I got to be honest with you. Ronnie we, it was, we awed us. We'd sit backstage and go, look at him. Oh, my God. He goes, but Lee Haney, he goes, sometimes we go backstage. He goes, we knew, okay, he's going to win. Who's going to be second? You know what I'm saying? It, but I guess he's saying almost the same thing. But, it, you know, it, it's, a, it's hard to argue that. It, it, I, I mean, Ron, I, you have to give the nod to Ronnie as the greatest ever. I would, you know, but God damn it, Lee Haney's right there. He's just right there. I mean, Lee Haney could suck in a vacuum and, you know, at such a big man. He's a big man. To pull a vacuum and we actually see the rib cage, is, is, you know, is, is amazing, you know, and he had that pop muscle. He'd come out, you know, everything was, at the, as he posed, he could stand here like this. And, you know, they all look great when you see him standing in a line. But when he starts bringing it up and everything, boom, 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 the lats come out, bang, 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 bang. You know, it's, it's just mind-blowing, you know. Do you think guys like Tony, you know, Tony Huge, right? I love Tony Huge. Do you think he's dangerous um, for the younger generation of aspiring bodybuilders because of the things he puts out there? I don't think that Tony Huge is dangerous because Tony Huge... I, I know that there's preferential, listen, by me sitting here going, I love steroids, that could be considered dangerous. Because some kid would be like, Valentino says steroids are good, and he shot steroids, and every body part said, I'm gonna do that. Uh, listen, so you can say anything. What I like about Tony Huge is he gives you the good and the bad. And he doesn't, he doesn't say, you need to start doing it. He, what he's doing is he's, he's Dr. Frankenstein, and he's also the Frankenstein monster. He's doing his experiments on himself, and he's showing you things. Now, he, I, he tells it like it is. He won't, he won't sugarcoat it. He'll tell you like...